Hello and welcome to this presentation on representing a thermal condition, putting temperatures into a structural analysis in a model that has line bodies meshed with beam elements. What we see here on the screen is a simple frame made out of line bodies. They are beam elements and they've been given a C-channel cross-section. The line body itself, you can just see these green lines so it's going to be a continuous set of beam elements connected at the corners. We have a cross-section in there. Here you can see the cross-section has been assigned. There's a small amount of information on the cross-section down in the details in the lower left. Here's our mesh. We've put in an edge sizing that gives us a reasonable number of beam elements along each physical beam. Beam elements do not have fourth order displacement curves, so you need several of them to approximate the deformation of real physical beams. We've put a physical support on this corner. This prevents both translation and rotation. And on the bottom right corner down here, you can see the yellow tag. We have fixed movement in Y and Z, but we're letting it expand in the X direction. We're looking to avoid thermal stresses. We put a force in the upper right corner. That's pulling in the pure X direction. And here, a thermal condition. Now we've put it in with tabular data, and you can see that the temperature from one end of the beam to the other ramps up and down and up and down. I've put in a minimum value of 100 degrees and a max of 300. You don't quite see those extremes in the legend because these points are not exactly where the nodes are on this model. I'll get better resolution of the input temperatures if I have a higher mesh density. If I make the mesh density too low, I'll miss out on the details of this temperature curve and get an analysis that's not satisfactory. Here's my deformation. And of course, I'm getting thermal expansion away from this fixed point. It's greatest up here at the top, both because of the force and because the temperature is increasing from the left end to the right hand end of this model. I can see what they call direct stresses in the beam elements and combined stresses, which is going to be axial and bending contributions with a beam tool. I can attempt to see the temperatures with a BFE input under user defined results. But a limitation of this interface is that the line bodies with their beam elements do not show us the temperatures that were applied. If these were solid elements, we would see a colored contour map of the temperatures. So in order to see the temperatures, I've put in an APDL commands object in the post processing area. Let me make that big enough to see. I start out by reading in a result with a set last. Out of interest, I've listed the element types in the model. I wanted to see how those temperatures have been applied. Were they applied to the nodes in the model? Or were they applied to the elements? And within the full APDL interface, you get different kinds of effects if you put the temperatures in at the element level versus at the node level. When you put temperatures in at the element level, adjacent elements that share a node could in fact have completely different temperatures. While if you put them in at the node level, then the elements interpolate the temperatures from one node to another. We're putting in commands to plot a PNG file with the graphics image, setting a height, setting a view, here it's isometric, turning on power graphics to see more detail inside the elements, showing the element shapes, showing some internal detail with faceting set to 2. The slash E facet default is 1, 2 shows more internal detail, and 4 shows even more internal detail when you plot contours. I want to see the temperatures that were applied when I plot the elements. It's here I'm simply listing the status of the controls for what detail is shown for body forces. And finally, I plot the elements. Because I turned on a view of temperature contours right here, when I look at the plot that came out, 
and there's an old style APDL plot. You can see the temperatures that were applied in the solve. This shows you what we've put for an input, while this shows you the temperatures that were used in the solve, and of course the two should agree with each other. Once again, if I have large elements, I won't capture this fine detail for a temperature that goes up and down and up and down again. So there's a quick look at using APDL commands to see the temperatures that were applied in a beam model. For a final illustration, let's go back to the mesh branch, go to edge sizing, and drop the number of divisions down to something really small, like three elements. Let's mesh this thing. Generate a mesh. And if I look under thermal condition, I'm not capturing that zigzag of going up to 300 degrees, down to 100, up to 300, and down to 100. You can see really poor approximation of the applied temperatures. If I solve the model and look at this plot, here too you see that what was used in the solution does not capture the details of the thermal condition. So if I have a complicated thermal condition, temperatures coming in either because I put them in as tabular data or perhaps because I mapped them in from an independent thermal analysis, I need a fine enough mesh density to capture the detail. This mesh density, as you see, is not capturing the detail that I want. Thank you for joining me.